brand new era in Cleveland. Deshaun Watson will be making the season debut for the Browns against his former team. What are the expectations for Watson down the stretch? The Jets have officially named Mike White their starting quarterback. Can he lead the Jets to a postseason appearance? It's speaking of the postseason, on this episode, we're going to be discussing three teams that could be making a miraculous run down the stretch and the playoffs on a brand new episode of Time to Football. Glad you guys are able to join us. My name is Hassan Khan, the host of this channel. I appreciate you guys watching, and if you guys uh, have been tuning in every single week waiting for this podcast, we didn't come out with a podcast last week just because it was Thanksgiving, had to go out of town, didn't have much time. Uh, and then this one, we usually come out on Tuesday nights, but I decided let's just experiment with Thursday, right before the Thursday night football game between the Buffalo Bills and the New, New England Patriots. So if you guys were premiering this uh, right before that game, how's everybody doing? In the comments, leave your picks down below. Who do you think is going to win? The Patriots, the Bills, is it going to be another windy, uh, bad element type of game as well? We love those AFC East battles between uh, Buffalo and, and all the other cold weather teams. Uh, love seeing all that. Uh, but hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date when we come out with these podcasts every single week. Uh, and then also give me a follow on Twitter as well, at It's Hassan Khan. I love interacting with you guys, and I love to chat with you guys throughout the duration of Thursday Night Football by the way, I hope that everyone had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I know that I did. I was watching all those games, including the Giants and the Cowboys. And Nick Gates, the Giants offensive lineman, actually post-game, came out and said that Michael Parsons was punching him during the game. I don't know whether that's true or not true. I have no idea. But this is why social media sucks, especially Facebook. Dude, Facebook is the worst social media ever. And it's not because of like what Facebook does. It's because of the people that are on Facebook, because you know how articles are, okay? The headline will say, Nick Gates accuses Micah Parsons of punching him during the Thanksgiving game. No one actually clicks on the article and reads it. There could be other details we don't know about, but nobody's going to find out about it. They're just going to read the headline, and then they're com going to comment down below. And Facebook is the worst, because the kind of people that are on Facebook are these kind of people. Oh, it's about leadership. It's about integrity. Toughen up. Stop being a sissy. You going to cry about it? Someone's punching you during a football game? Yeah, dude, someone was punching me. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to complain about it. Hey, stop punching me, bro. Okay, so recently I announced that uh, on my fantasy football channel that I'm going to be quitting fantasy football entirely. Not even on the new channel. I'm not doing fantasy football at all after this season, right? So I stopped doing it at, on this channel, beginning of the season, and back in March I announced it, man. I announced, hey, no more fantasy football on this channel, so unsubscribe. Unsubscribe from this channel. Uh, we're going to have podcasts. We're going to have documentaries. We're going to have player interviews, but we're not going to have fantasy football on this channel. Well, nobody was unsubscribing. That hurt the algorithm because, like, I come out with a video. They get the notification. They don't click on the not notification, and they're just like, uh, YouTube's like, okay, well, your videos, nobody's interested in it, so we're not going to promote it to new people. Well, I need to get rid of all these people that were, like, ghost followers, uh, and so then I kind of, like, clickbaited people into clicking this video uh, where it said, like, had the thumbnail, like, week, thir week 13, starts and sits, fantasy football, had the whole title and everything, and it started with a five-second intro saying, time now uh, for your fantasy football must starts and must sits for week 13. People clicked on it. Time now for a fantasy football must starts and must sits for week 13. And then it was me popping up saying, hey, unsubscribe. Ha! Gotcha. Hey, I don't do fantasy football on this channel. Stop asking me about it. If you're subscribed just for fantasy football, unsubscribe. Go on. Get out of here. See ya. Unsubscribe. And then I played Rick Roll. I've announced it probably 30 times in different videos, on posts. I don't do it. So unsubscribe. I would love if people unsubscribed if they only care about fantasy football. Uh, if you care about the other stuff, I hey, welcome in. Welcome in. I would love for you guys to continue to watch. Uh, if not, get out of here. Um, sorry, it was a it was a big uh, heel move. Made a little bit of a heel turn on the channel, um, but whatever. Anyways, let's just move on with today's topic. First, Deshaun Watson returning and making a season debut with the Cleveland Browns this weekend. Hey guys, Deshaun Watson is back. Ruthless Aggression WWE, the best. Deshaun Watson is back, but is he better than ever? This is his first action 
and over a year. Well, maybe I shouldn't word it like that. But this is the first time that he's playing football in well over a year. Meaningful football because the only sample size that we have of him, thankfully, is from him on the Cleveland Browns, was back in preseason when he played against the Jacksonville Jaguars. He went one for five and only seven yards passing. So is it fair to assess Deshaun Watson based off that sample size? Like, what are the expectations for him for the remainder of the six-game stretch and him going into 2023? Well, you may look at the stats and say, ah, he looks rusty. He might be rusty this weekend against the Texans. Maybe. He could be. I'm not doubting that. But if you look back at the preseason game, two of those incompletions were drops by the ever-so-lovable Anthony Schwartz. Hey, Cleveland Browns fans really, really, absolutely 100% love Anthony Schwartz. Like, I cannot think of a better uh, person that the, the Browns could have drafted in the third round. But Anthony Schwartz, or was it second? I don't know. Schwartz dropped a couple of passes, and that's why, you know, he went one for five with only seven yards. So that's not a fair assessment for Deshaun Watson. The only sample that we have is him and his tenure with the Houston Texans, which he was absolutely amazing with. Uh, so the remaining schedule for the Browns, as they sit at four and seven, is they got the Texans this weekend, then the Bengals, the Ravens, the Saints, Washington, and Pittsburgh. Pretty tough stretch. So you could realistically see them going three and three, four and two. Because let's say the Texans, let's just choose the favorites in all of these. They beat the Texans, they lose to the Bengals, they lose to the uh, Ravens, they beat the Saints. Washington is like the only toss up, like uh, maybe they could beat Washington, maybe not. Let's say that they lose to them and then they beat the Steelers. But if they beat Washington, then that's two losses, four wins. They could go 7-10, and 8-9. and nine. So pretty much more than likely they are done and they're probably not going to be making the postseason with the competition, with like the seventh seed being the New York Jets sitting at 7-4. and four, It's going to be hard to make a wild card spot or earn a wild card spot at this point. Uh, so you're just starting him just to see what he's got, what he's capable of, get him some action, get him some uh, quality reps, Get him some experience for the Cleveland Browns as they move forward into 2023. Uh, this weekend against the Houston Texans, I do think it's going to be close. I don't think that it's going to be a blowout by any means. I don't think, if you're thinking he's going to go in there and throw five touchdowns, more than likely it's probably not going to happen. I think the Browns escape it and, and they probably win by like three or four points or something like that. But um, he is going to look a bit rusty. But it's because it's his first action. Like if you look at week one of any given season, Everybody that you expect to be good is just rusty in week one. Same deal. This is his week one of NFL uh, playing time. But after this week, I do believe that he is going to go back to normal. You're going to see the Deshaun Watson of the past. Like, he's still young. He's still talented. He has, I mean, he's taken a year and a half, however long, off. He hasn't suffered many hits. He's healthy. You're going to see the Sean Watson of the past, and Cleveland Browns fans, you should be excited. But I want to hear from you guys. Like, what are your expectations of Deshaun Watson of the Browns in the six game stretch? Do you think that they can make that miracle turnaround and they win six games in a row, go 10 and seven, make the playoffs? I don't think anyone's really believing that. But going into 2023, like, do you think Watson is like, oh my gosh, like, if we can see the Deshaun Watson, just a glimpse of it in the past in 2023? Like, that'll be huge for free agency. Like, everybody wants to sign with us. Like, leave your comments down below. I would love to interact with you and hear your opinion on Deshaun Watson. Moving on to our next topic, let's talk about another quarterback that has been named the starter. That is Mike White, replacing Zach Wilson as the starting quarterback of the New York Jets. But who is Mike White? I mean, we saw a little bit of a sample size last season, started three games, but we're not too familiar with who Mike White is. Let me go ahead and tell you guys about his past. He did become a starting quarterback in football until his senior year of high school, where he threw for 22 touchdowns to just two interceptions. That was good enough for him to get an offer and commit to the University of South Florida. But his freshman season kind of struggled just a bit. Three passing touchdowns to nine interceptions. Decided to transfer after his sophomore year to Western Kentucky, where he excelled, throwing for 8,500 yards, 63 touchdowns to only 15 interceptions. He was good enough to be projected as a third or fourth round pick 
in the 2018 NFL Draft. However, he was invited to the NFL Combine, and he struggled, and that hurt his draft stock. He fell all the way to the fifth round to the Dallas Cowboys. After a couple years with them, in 2019 preseason, he was fighting for a backup quarterback job behind Dak Prescott. The Cowboys decided to keep two quarterbacks, and they cut Mike White. Just a month later in 2019, the Jets decided to sign him. And after the craziness of releasing, waving him, signing to the practice squad, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, he eventually landed on the 53-man roster for the Jets in 2021. And once Zach Wilson got hurt, he came in and was named the starter for three games. He surprised everyone, including a tied come-from-behind victory against the Cincinnati Bengals, the same Bengals who made the Super Bowl as an AFC representative that same year. But this season, Zach Wilson showed his on-the-field struggles, questionable post-game comments. Robert Sala, under a lot of fire from the media, decided to name Mike White their starting quarterback. And against the Bears, he lit it up. Over 70% of his passes completed, over 300 yards passing, three touchdowns, and zero interceptions. Mike White has now been named the starter against the Minnesota Vikings, and if he continues to do well, we presume that he'll be the starting quarterback for the remainder of the season. Will he lead the Jets to a postseason appearance? But not only a postseason appearance, but something that the Jets haven't seen in a very long time, a postseason victory. Mark Sanchez, over a decade ago, was the last quarterback to lead the Jets to a postseason victory. Can it happen with Mike White under center? Currently, they are the seventh seed, sitting at 7-4. and four. The schedule coming up is Minnesota, Buffalo, Detroit, Jacksonville, Seattle, and Miami. It's a tough six-game stretch. Realistically, they need to win three more games to guarantee themselves a playoff spot in a tough AFC wildcard race. I'm a big fan of Mike White because he utilizes his offensive stars the way that they should be utilized. Zach Wilson and Tyler Conklin didn't have that connection like Joe Flacco and Conklin did, but White, with his first game back with Conklin against Chicago, had him involved in the offense. Elijah Moore is the perfect example of someone who was unhappy, wanted a trade, didn't like playing with Zach Wilson. They kind of hashed it out, talked it out, and now he's staying in New York. And he was very well utilized in that game against the Chicago Bears. They use their star players the way that they need to be used. He unlocks the potential in his receivers in a very great way. I want to hear your thoughts. What do you think of Mike White? Do you think that he should be named the starter moving forward? Do you think that Zach Wilson is going to be the Jets starter anytime soon? Maybe even next year in 2023? Or do you think that his days in New York are over Maybe in his career, like is it going to be a starter somewhere else, kind of bounce around from team to team, not really have a permanent home? Leave your comments down below. I would love to interact with everyone. I'm going to talk about three teams that could go on a miracle postseason run. We've all seen it before. 2007 New York Giants, 2010 Green Bay Packers, 2011 New York Giants, 2012 Baltimore Ravens. These teams get hot at the right time and use that momentum to help them advance through the wild card, through the division round, Conference Championship, and eventually a Super Bowl title. Which teams could do the same in 2022? First, let's talk about team number one, the Los Angeles Chargers. Hold on, they're 6-5, and five, and if the playoffs started today, they would be out of it. Why do you have the Chargers on this list? Well, to be 6-5 and five and go through the amount of injuries that they've gone through, Justin Herbert, fractured ribs, without Keenan Allen, without Mike Williams, their defense suffering some injuries as well, Sitting at 6-5, and five, it could be a lot worse. And the reason why I have them as a miracle team now is because once I saw that two-point conversion against the Arizona Cardinals to win the game, I thought, okay, Brandon Staley really actually does not care what everybody else thinks. He's going to do what he feels like is the right move. Staley is known for dumb moves. Okay, let's just call it what it is. Going for it on fourth down in his own territory in the third quarter, when the game is on the line as well, he, he's known and criticized often for these boneheaded decisions. But that two-point conversion, at first you could have been like, okay, why don't you just tie the game, go into overtime, and you know play it safe. You could have said it was a pretty dumb decision, but I mean, at the end of the day, it paid off. 
And if he's willing to take risks like that, believes in his team, let's just go for it. Let's win this game. I know that we can win this game. It tells me that a miracle could be happening for the Los Angeles Chargers. Who knows? The remaining schedule for the Chargers, the Raiders, the Dolphins, the Titans, the Colts, the Rams, and the Broncos. They were favored to win in four out of those six games. Go four and two in the six game stretch, you end up being 10 and seven. That is good enough to lock in a wild card spot. At that point, you know, it just depends on the matchup, who they face. But more than likely, you could see the Chargers pushing for a postseason appearance come week 18. So the Chargers don't count them out. The second team that could be making a miracle postseason run, I mean, we were just talking about Mike White, the New York Jets. Their schedule coming up, like we mentioned, the Vikings, the Bills, Lions, Jacksonville, Seattle, Miami. They could go three and three. It's going to be tough, maybe two and four. So they could fall to nine and eight, maybe 10 and seven. But I believe in the miracle just because of the season that they're having so far. Nobody really believed in the Jets in the beginning. People thought that they'd be competing for a top five draft pick. But not only are they in contention in this current seventh seed in the AFC playoff race, but a switch at quarterback, a better switch at quarterback that ended up being a good move for them could catapult them. I mean, you see miracles all the time with quarterbacks leading their teams to Super Bowl appearances. Kurt Warner, Tom Brady, maybe Mike White could be that guy for New York who hasn't seen a Super Bowl appearance since 1969. The New York Jets, do you guys believe that they could pull off that miracle run? That is team number two on this list. And the last team, we got to give them credit, the Washington Commanders. The things that they're doing with Taylor Heideke, as opposed to Carson Wentz, is amazing. And it's kind of baffling because you look at Carson Wentz and say, okay, they got more yards, they got more touchdowns, they were scoring. Like, why is it that Taylor Heineke all of a sudden is a difference maker? I couldn't tell you, man. They just win games. That's just how it is. Heineke has been this kind of guy that he'll grit through it, won't put up the best amount of numbers, best stats, maybe only 200 yards passing, one touchdown, one interception, but he gets it done. He knows what he's doing, and all he cares about is just winning games. And if you blinked, you would have missed it, but they currently sit at 7-5. and five. They sit at 7-5, and five, and they are currently the seventh seed in the NFC wildcard race. Their schedule remaining for the season. The New York Giants, by week. New York Giants, San Francisco, Cleveland, and Dallas. That's a pretty tough schedule coming up, but they have the benefit of playing the Giants in back-to-back weeks with a bye week mix in there. So you play the Giants this weekend, see what they're capable of, then you take all that information into the bye week and you spend an entire week dissecting that and then beating them in the second game. I say beating them because more than likely they would be the favorite if you have two weeks to prepare, but they could split or they could sweep the New York Giants. I don't see them uh, going 0-2 against the Giants. Uh, San Francisco is going to be tough. Cleveland with Deshaun Watson, maybe. Dallas is going to be tough. We know that. Uh, but they could finish 9-8, and 8-9. and It's going to be a tough hill to climb. But Heineke, his entire career, has had a tough hill to climb. Jumping around from team to team. And finally, Ron Rivera seeing something that he likes, bringing him from Carolina to Washington, and is now the starting quarterback for the remainder of the season, hoping to lock in the Commanders a postseason berth. So those are my three teams, the Chargers, the Jets, and the Commanders. Leave your comments down below. I want to hear your potential miracle Super Bowl postseason runs, and do you believe in these three teams as well? And to wrap up the show, let's go ahead and talk about Week 13 picks. Before Thursday night football between the Bills and the Patriots, we want to go through each game, give you our picks, and let you guys know who we think is going to win each game. Uh, so between the Buffalo Bills and the New England Patriots, this game is taking place in New England. Uh, the Bills are five-point favorites, and uh, Bills minus five would be the spread that I would take. Uh, I believe that the Bills are going to win this game. The Pittsburgh Steelers versus the Atlanta Falcons. The Falcons at home are actually minus one-and-a-half-point favorites. Uh, I think the Steelers are going to pull this off. Their defense is much better with T.J. Watt and Mika Fitzpatrick. Uh, Arthur Smith just announced that Kyle Pitts is going to be out for the remainder of the season. Not that like Kyle Pitts was even in for the season, it felt like. So uh, the Steelers plus one and a half would be the spread that I would take here. Uh, the Denver Broncos versus the Baltimore Ravens. 
the Ravens are uh, eight-point favorites. It's going to continue to look bad. The Ravens' defense has actually gotten much better. I, I will give them credit and against the Denver Broncos' offense. Dude, every week, it's like, this is the week. This is the week. This is the week that the Broncos are going to get together. No, just for the whole season, they're not going to get together. Uh, we got the Ravens minus eight as the uh, pick. Uh, Green Bay Packers versus Chicago Bears. Uh, the Packers are two-point favorites, and uh, I think they could actually do some damage here, and I think the Packers are going to win. Uh, Packers minus two would be the uh, pick here, here on the spread. I don't know if Justin Fields is returning this week. I believe he is. He's going to be limited throughout the duration of this week. He was limited last week, ended up being a game-time decision until Saturday. They activated another quarterback off the practice squad. Uh, it was Nathan Peterman that they activated. So uh, I, I believe that he is going to be playing. But even if he plays, Packers, their offense is starting to get better. Packers minus two. Uh, Jacksonville Jaguars versus Detroit Lions. The Lions minus one uh, is the... Uh, the Lions are the favorites, and Lions minus one is the spread that we would take here. I think it's going to be close. Uh, don't be fooled if it's a revenge game for DJ Chark and he ends up having a big day. The Cleveland Browns versus the Houston Texans. The Browns are seven-point favorites, and I think that's a little bit too much. Uh, like we said when we were talking about Deshaun Watson, we believe that Watson is going to be a little bit rusty, might struggle just a bit. Uh, so we're going to go with Texans plus seven as a pick for the spread, but I feel like the Browns are ultimately going to pull it off at the end. Uh, the New York Jets versus the Minnesota Vikings. The Vikings are three-point favorites, and we're going to roll with that. Vikings minus three is a pick on the spread. Maybe Sauce Gardner locks up Justin Jefferson, but Jefferson is unguardable. We got the Vikings to win. Commanders versus New York Giants. The Commanders are minus one-and-a-half-point favorites. Man, how much of a benefit is it for the Commanders to face the Giants, have a bye week, and then face the Giants again? I, I believe that the Commanders could sweep the Giants in the next three weeks. Uh, so I'm taking Commanders minus one and a half. Tennessee Titans versus Philadelphia Eagles this is one of the games of the week. Uh, minus five and a half is the uh, spread here for the Eagles. I got Titans plus five and a half. I think the Eagles are ultimately going to pull it off at the end. But Mike Vrabel, one of the head coaching year or head coaches of the year candidates, he does a very good job adapting to his opponent. So Titans plus five and a half. I think this game is going to be very very close. Uh, Seattle Seahawks versus Los Angeles Rams. The Seahawks are five-point favorites, and I'm going to say that the Seahawks are going to beat uh, the Rams uh, minus five and a half. I think John Wolford might be starting in this game, if I'm not mistaken. Might be Bryce Perkins, but it's the Rams season is over. Aaron Donald is actually out uh, for this game, so that should go ahead and tell you. Uh, Miami Dolphins versus San Francisco, San Francisco 49ers. The other game of the week, the 49ers are three and a half-point favorites. I'm going with the Dolphins, plus three and a half. I feel like this game is going to be pretty close. I don't know, honestly, who's going to win, but if you guys are picking spreads and things like that, Dolphins plus three and a half would be a pretty safe bet uh, with them being eight and three uh, at this point. Uh, the Kansas City Chiefs versus the Cincinnati Bengals. The Chiefs are two and a half point favorites. <sighs> I know that the Bengals have the Chiefs number back to last season. I'm still going to pick the Chiefs, though. Chiefs minus two and a half. I think, you know, three times in a row, I don't think it happens. I think uh, the Chiefs pull this one off. Uh, the Los Angeles Chargers versus the Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, Chargers minus two is the uh, is a pick here that I have. Uh, I like Josh Jacobs. I think he's got to have, have a very good game again. They're killing him. They are killing Josh Jacobs because they know that they're not going to resign him. It's like, let's just go ahead and just see what he's got. And um, But Chargers minus two is is ultimately the pick that I have. Uh, Sunday night football, Indianapolis Colts versus the Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys are nine and a half point favorites. That's a little bit too much. I think the Cowboys are going to win, but nine and a half, I'm going to lean towards the Colts making this a close game. I mean, with Jeff Saturday, they've made every game so far a close one against the Raiders, against the Eagles. And then last week, uh, who they faced last week on Monday Night Football? The Steelers. It was a pretty close one. So I think that this is going to be close as well. I got the Colts plus nine and a half. And then Monday Night Football, the New Orleans Saints versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Bucks are four point favorites, and they're probably going to beat them more by four. Uh, I don't know why it's only four. Maybe it's because both of them have losing records. Like, oh, the Buccaneers are only one game ahead of the Saints. Yeah. But have you seen the Saints play? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with the Bucks and this one. Uh, but that's going to do it for this episode of Time to Football. So I appreciate you guys watching. 
And remember, make sure you guys give me give me a follow on Twitter as well at It's Hassan Khan. And subscribe to this channel. If you guys aren't already subscribed, so you can stay up to date when these podcasts come out. I love interacting with you guys. And thank you guys so much for watching this as a Thursday night football pregame show between the Bills and the Patriots. With all that said, thank you guys so much for watching this episode. And I'll see you next week. Enjoy the game.